Good evening, guys. It's Hitman23 coming at you from Naples. I'm doing a late night binder review. I'll call this part two. Um, this is uh, player C through G, binder number two of the uh, All Stars and Fan Faves. So, start off here, as you can see, we got uh, Mr. Cecil Cooper. And I got Cecil, played for the Red Sox and the Brewers. Great hitter. Uh, part of that 82 team with uh, Robin Yount, Paul Molitor, Gorman Thomas, and Ben Ogilvy, the Harvey Wallbanger team, who played against the Cardinals. And we got Jose Cruz, a long time he's an Astro, um, started his career with the Cardinals, ended his actually career with the Yankees. Just a great hitter. Uh, I always think of um, when I think of him, I think of the Astros. He's kind of one of those all-time Astros, and got that uh, really cool high leg kick, lefty swing. Good, solid player. And then we go into Johnny Damon, Captain Caveman on the Red Sox, and then Captain Clean Cut on the Yankees. And uh, there we go. And then Chris Crush Davis. Big slugger for the Baltimore Orioles at first base. It's a good, great player. Guy can crush that ball, hence the name there. Crush. And then another Davis. Um, I remember his rookie cards in '85 were hot to trot, man. Those were the ones to get. You know, besides Dwight Gooden and like you know Roger Clemens, um, Eric Davis had uh, both, all three. Um, you know, all three sets had his rookie card: Fleer, Do Tops, and Donruss. Um, they were definitely great cards. He started his career off with a bang. Um, toward the end, tailed off a bit. You know, he dealt with some. I think he dealt with Cantor for a little while, um, but uh, he was a great, uh, great player on the Reds. He bounced between the Dodgers, Tigers, Cardinals, Orioles for a while. Just a good, solid player. I actually like those uh, those 91 score inserts. Those are pretty cool. I don't even know if they're actually part. They're really inserts. They're, they're numbered in the series, so I don't really think they're considered inserts. They're subsets. But I like those. Those are definitely cool. From the Junk Wax era, which most of this stuff is. Um, just fun. Fun medley of cards all together in one place. Get to look at the uh, memories and uh, just think back on the when when times were different, man. Eric Davis. I always like those. Those are inserts. Those Fleer All Star inserts. Those are nice. And you got Carlos Delgado. Fell short of 500 home runs by not much. Definite borderline Hall of Famer. Uh, very similar career path with um, Fred McGriff. Um, both started with the, the Toronto Blue Jays and went elsewhere afterwards. Um, this guy was a great hitter. Had some monster years for the Blue Jays. And um, played for the Mets and the Marlins as well. He's a great player. A couple of different pinnacle. With the, like a regular, regular issue here. And then like a more of a refractory kind there. It's nice. I always like this Bowman's best. I don't like that Bowman there. It's kind of a kind of a shiny Nate card there. A little rainbow action. He was a great player. And then the big donkey, Adam Dunn. He was another one of these sluggers, kind of all or nothing guy. He either hit the ball eight miles or strike out. Um, big dude. He could actually run pretty well for a big guy. Um, but he played for, you know, he played for the Reds. He played for the Nats. He played for the White Sox. He played. There's another team he played for in there, I think. Reds, Nats. Well, oh, and he played for the Diamondbacks too. I should I forgot. Yep, the Diamondbacks. And uh, then we got Daryl Evans. He was a longtime player for the Braves, Giants, and Tigers. Great hitter. Um, very underrated, I feel. Um, definitely a borderline Hall of Famer. Um, he actually held the record of um, most home runs over the age of 40 until David Ortiz broke it last year. I think he hit like 41. And it was an 80. I think it was like 80. Let me see here. He hit 40 home runs in 85, I believe. Yeah, it was 40 home runs in 85. I think he was at the time was the oldest guy ever to hit 40 home runs. But uh, just a great hitter. And there's a shout-out to Mr. Jay McGillicuddy up there in New Hampshire. 
Dwight Evans, um, man with the golden arm in right field over there in Fenway Park for many, many years. Um, started off his career, um, you know, pretty pretty decent player, and then he really didn't start hitting for power until a little bit later on in his career. And he put up some nice career numbers. Um, he was just an all-time, you know, an all-time Red Sox and a uh, great player. Very strange to see him finish his career in an Orioles uniform, and that's coming from a Yankees fan. So this guy was uh, this guy was the real deal. Um, and he rocked a pretty sweet mustache too. So Dwight Evans, we call him Dewey, Dewey Evans. So yeah, and we got uh, Big Daddy Cecil Fielder. He used to hit home runs into the roof of Tiger Stadium. Um, he played for a couple years with the. The Toronto Blue Jays to start his career, and then he went to Japan and then came back and just lit it up for a couple years in the American League for the Tigers, and then 96 he's on the Yankees for their World Series team. And uh, just again, another guy who could just freaking crush the ball. And then after Cecil, of course, we would have Prince, his son, um, famously for not getting along with each other, I believe. Um, but just a shame this guy's career has been, has been cut short. He had to retire a year ago um, due to neck injury. Um, this guy was a great hitter. Um, he hit 50 home runs for the Brewers and looked like this guy was going to, you know, prob probably be a Hall of Famer, but it just didn't didn't work out for him. Um, yeah, it's a shame. Uh, that's a pretty cool card there. I like that uh, 9, uh, 09 OPG black border parallel. They, uh, they kind of copped the uh, 76 top set in there and paid Homage, homage to the 76 top set. And then he finished up with the Rangers. War number 84 for his year of birth. Thought that was kind of strange or kind of cool, you know. And we got John Franco. Um, awesome, longtime lefty closer for the Reds and the Mets. And uh, what can you say about John? He was just a solid, solid all-around player, man. He, can, uh, he was a great closer for many, many years. I think he uh, holds a record for saves by a left-hander. And then uh, more John Franco. And there's another Franco, Julio Franco. Um, this guy played he was like 98 years old. Um, I think he even hit a home run when he was like 76 or something like that. He played for freaking decades. He still may be playing somewhere. I, I, I don't know, but this guy was a good player. He was an all-star for a few years. Um, started off with the, I think he was a property of the Phillies. And I believe, um, you can tell me if I'm wrong, either Mike O or Ray, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think Julio Franco was one of the players traded to the Indians for Von Hayes. Um, but this guy played up until, I don't know, a few years ago, it seems like. He was with the Braves and the Mets, and he's just unbelievable. Guy never stopped. He's like the new Mini Minoso. But yes, Julio Franco. See, he was an all-star for a few years there at the Rangers and the Indians. Good player. Good, solid player. Got a lot of his stuff. And then the big cat, Andres Galarraga. Played a smooth first base. Great hitter. Um, played for the Expos, Cardinals, Rockies. And then toward the end of his career, bounced around to the Braves a little bit. Back and forth to a couple other teams. Rangers. Um, just a good hitter. And he actually dealt. I think he also dealt with cancer toward the end of his career. Um, this guy was great, and his son famously pit pitched that uh, almost perfect game for the Tigers that was ruined by that ump, um, Armando. That's his son. And a couple of his rookie card, his rookie card there. Eighty six Fleer. This guy can handle the leather at first, that's for sure. And no, 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 no fan favorite collection is is complete without Oscar Gamble, man. I mean, just for that card right there, that's why I collect Oscar Gamble. Um, he was a solid hitter, good player. Um, but that card, man, that's definitely... Like, I know it's part of the 300 greatest baseball cards of all time by uh, Mike Payne. Um, and that's just... Look at that, man. It's just insane. That is a power throw to the max, man. And even in the card before, his regular base card from 76, you can see... You can see it banging out from under his helmet there. It's pretty wild. And then a 75, man. It's almost even crazier. It's like Princess Leia or something. I don't know. These guys have buns on the side of his head, but... How do you like that, man? And I always just liked his cards, man. He's got some great... That's 72 tops, that 71 tops. Beautiful looking cards. Oscar Gamble. Played... Had a couple of tours of duty with the Yankees. 
And we got the man who probably should be in the Hall of Fame, Steve Garvey. Um, awesome um, first baseman for the Dodgers throughout the 70s. And then went to the Padres in 83, which is strange. Um, this guy was the National League Ironman for a long time. Great glove, great hitter. Probably should be in the Hall of Fame. Won some World Series with the Dodgers, I think, in 81. Um, actually, he won one with the Dodgers, and he lost three with the Dodgers, and he lost one with the Padres. So, But uh, great, great player, Steve Garvey. I'd like to move him to my Hall of Fame book someday. Kirk Gibson, we know what he's famous for in 1988. That gimpy home run off of Dennis Eckersley in the World Series. And uh, just a good, good player, man. Solid player for the Tigers. Had a great series in 84. Good hitter. Um, dealt with a lot of knee injuries. Uh, I heard he's kind of a jerk, but <laughs> hey, what do you have, man? Not everybody can be a nice guy. So Kirk Gibson in cargo. More of a modern player. Don't know what his numbers would look like if he wasn't in Colorado, but just a you know, good, solid player. And uh, try to represent some of the newer guys. And then last but not least, we got uh, Dwight Doc Gooden. I lived in New York in his um, rookie years there in um, 1985, maybe 45, 86, and this guy was just unbelievable to watch. And that's coming from a Yankee fan. This guy was just insane. Um, it was like he was definitely um, headed straight for the Hall of Fame based on those couple of years. But unfortunately, you know, his life turned you know, a little little southward and he got involved in stuff he shouldn't have gotten involved with and definitely hurt his, his career and, you know, probably tore up his arm a bit too. I mean, he was throwing just fire his first couple of years out of the gate. And I'm, I'm assuming the training regimens back then, 30 plus years ago, were not what they are today. Um, but this guy was definitely headed for the Hall of Fame and uh, just unfortunately he just kind of flamed out. Um, but, you know, he did throw a no-hitter for the Yankees in 96, so what can I say? Uh, Dwight Gooden, a uh, great pitcher in his time. But that's it tonight, guys. Um, hope you have a great week. Um, I'll be back soon with another one of these. Not sure which way I'll go, if I'll continue with the alphabet or if I'll go in a different direction. But like I always say, may the cardboard gods shine down upon us all. Thank you for watching, and uh, I will see you later. Peace.